Well, first of all, I want to thank everyone for coming tonight. Uh, Deb would have been in storytelling heaven tonight. Uh, she was the best storytelling listener I ever knew. It didn't matter how long that story lasted. It didn't matter how excruciatingly awful it was. <laughs> she always had something good to say about the story and the storyteller. So she was, uh, she would, she would have loved this here tonight. But uh, um, a lot, some of you know Deb really knew Deb really well. Some of you never met her probably. So I wanted to share a few things with you tonight uh, about Deb and. From the very first, the very first meeting of River and Prairies, Deb was on board. And she took on the job back then. There wasn't all electronic stuff that we have today. And she took on the job of putting out a newsletter once a month for wraps. We called it the wrap sheet. And so, uh, she did that. She also uh, designed the logo, our original logo. Uh, Deb designed that. It's the one that's on my hat. It's the original one. Um, she designed that. Um, so she was very supportive of storytelling. She designed the logo in 1998 when the National Storytelling Conference came to Kansas City. She designed the logo for the National Conference. Um, so... Uh, Some of her favorite storytellers were Elizabeth Ellis, Jackie Torrance, Tim Manson, Janet Filkel. Those were some of her favorite storytellers. Um, she encouraged every storyteller she met. And she would sit in the back, like uh, Linda said, she would always sit towards the back. She's usually sketching somebody's back of somebody's head that's what she did in church she'd sit in church and she'd draw people the back of their heads so so but uh, it gave her good practice um, and not only Deb but the whole Wallen family has been involved in in storytelling since we started River and Prairie Story Weavers and uh, uh, Cassie when uh, she was learning to drive her mom says and her mom's Debbie's sister said and you take Cassie and teach her to drive. I don't think her mom really wanted to. <laughs> yeah. So we get, I'm on a tour in, in Southwest Kansas. I've got 15 jobs in five days, uh, three libraries a day, one in the morning, one in the afternoon, one in the evening. And in Southwest Kansas, you got to drive at least two hours to get any place. And so we're coming home, we're on our way home, and we're driving through Wichita, and Cassie's driving, and all of a sudden, there's a huge wreck in front of us, and they divert us off into this cornfield, <laughs> and I have no idea, Cassie says, which way do I go? I said, just follow the cars in front of you, because I don't know where we're at, so we finally made our way back to 54 Highway, but she took it in stride, it was bumper to bumper, People were honking their horns, and she just took it in stride. Uh, Zach, my uh, youngest grandson, has been to 21 different states with me. He was, he was a slacker of the two brothers. His older brother's been to 23 different states with me. And their mom uh, would always say, Dad, anytime you want to take them with you, go ahead and take them with you. Because they get a better history education with you than they ever do in school. And so we had some great times together. We still talk about how we miss those times of being together. Um, Katie. Katie, uh, my youngest granddaughter, she's uh, she didn't get to travel with me as much because of some of her uh, physical issues that she has. So. She didn't get to travel with me as much, but we still had some good times. She's an excellent storyteller as well. Um, Emily, my great granddaughter, she's going to be a great storyteller. And the littlest one, uh, Miss Piper, her name is Deborah Piper. Everybody calls her Piper. 
I call her little Debbie because she was named after Deb. And so I'm the only one in the family that's allowed to call her little Debbie. But uh, so um, uh, my whole family's been involved the whole time. Um, Zach and Katie's dad actually played Native American love flute on the first recording that we ever did at, uh, at Trails West Library in Independence. And, uh, but I wanted to show you some of Deb's other, everybody thinks that she was an artist and she was a fine artist. In 2002, uh, the 100th anniversary of Sedalia State Fair, she won best to show at Sedalia State Fair. Um, but she loved doing basket weaving. She made many, many baskets. Um, pastel paintings were her, was her passion, but she also, she took a welding class in college and did some sculptural welding. So, and there's lots of pictures from the time she was uh, just a baby all the way up through uh, the rest of her life. She loved doing scrimshaw. Scrimshaw is where you scratch uh, a design and ink it in, in a piece of bone or a piece of ivory, or in that case, a powder horn. So if you get a chance, come up and look at some of the different uh, things that she did. But uh, I wanted to read you, she was a great poet. Gary. She found out someone was having a baby. She would crochet a quilt or a little Afghan for him. And uh, inside the card, this is what she wrote. This blanket was made with love for your little gift from above. With every stitch, I said a prayer for the little one to be happy and fair. I prayed for his toes all the way to his nose. I prayed for his brother, father, and mother. I prayed for his future wife to have a good life. I prayed for health and good wealth. I prayed for his mind, and that would be kind. I prayed knowledge and for money for college. I prayed for his life's career and, played and prayed for his future tears. I prayed for his whole life but mostly to walk with Christ. And she signed it, Jim and Debbie Wallen. And she would give that to anybody that uh, was having a child. And then uh, my daughter, uh, I think most of you know, my our only child um, passed away 18 months after my wife did. And uh, we were we were always very close. And so my daughter wrote this, uh, when she was really sick and just and after just after my wife had passed. And so it says, where can I find light in a dark place? How do I experience happiness in the midst of grief? What good can come from serious illness? Most of my life, I had struggled with these questions. Strangely, in the middle of my circumstances now, I find these easier to answer. Light and happiness and goodness are all here. One of the most beautiful things that has happened is that my dad and I have become even closer during this time. He has always been a remarkable father, but now even during his own crushing grief, he has been there for me, taking me to appointments and checking on me every day. We have laughed and cried and prayed together more in these few weeks than I can remember. So I'd like to wish Jim Wallen happy Father's Day. These are precious memories and I'm grateful uh, to have you and to be weird just like you. Um, she got, I got to tell you this story. All right. So first day of kindergarten, my wife gets called to the principal's office. And so she goes into the principal's office and the, my wife says, what's the problem? She says, well, 
your daughter seems to think that she's weird. <laughs> and so come to find out the teacher had asked them what they had done over the summer and to tell something about their family. And the first thing she says is, I'm weird, just like my daddy. And the teacher said, honey, you're not weird. And she said, yes, I am, just like my daddy. <laughs> so Deb got called to the principal's office to straighten it out and said, well, you have to understand our family. <laughs> he is a little weird. <laughs> and the teacher met you and she knew. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's all it took. Um, let me finish with this and then I'll be done and we'll find out who won. Back in the 90s, my dad had started a storytelling group. I was still professionally storytelling at the time, so I belonged to the group for many years, one of the best storytellers I ever knew. She was fantastic. Um, I made a lot of friends and memories during that time. As my family grew, my priorities changed and I left storytelling. But the family of storytellers I was a part of that I was a part of never left me. Fast forward to this year, many of my old friends from River and Prairie Story Weavers called, wrote, and sent cards. One in particular has sent several cards and very regularly lets me know she and her husband are praying for me. Her faithful support is so meaningful to me. I am grateful for, grateful for old friends like Linda Koontz, who are there when I need them, even many years later. And this is a direct quote from her. She says, I have had to learn to give up things. Um, I have had to learn to give things up, house, children, and even my body. They all belong to God. I didn't get everything I wanted in life, but I did get everything I really wanted. And um, so that was that was my daughter, uh, Christy. Um, Tremendous storyteller, uh, great mama. She raised four really great children. And uh, some of them took after their grandpa. And <laughs> some of them didn't. <laughs> <laughs> and I guess that's lucky for them. So, well, thank, and once again, thank you all for coming. Uh, thank you for being a part of the Deb Wallen Story Slam. Um, I'm sorry if you never met her. I'm sorry. She was a tremendous lady. Uh, everybody loved Deb. Everybody loved Deb. If you knew her, you loved her. She was just that kind of person. <laughs>